Hey, welcome back. Today is March 25th, Thursday, and on this post, I'll be telling you about the overall crypto markets, which includes Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin price action very quickly, and see how it could potentially affect the overall altcoin markets. Before diving into Maker, MKR, USD, and see what exactly is going on in here, I'll be telling you about the bullish and bearish case scenarios for today, as well as the short-term price prediction on this market, according to what I'm seeing on the charts. Before I begin today, if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video, as I'll be keeping updated on the latest crypto setups on my watch list, regardless if it's a good day or a bad day. If you want to support me and don't already have a Wee Bubble Clutch account, you guys can use my referral link down below. They're still giving away two free stocks as of today upon a successful sign up and a qualifying deposit of 100 US dollars. And I will also receive a referral bonus if you guys sign up under me. Please also read my full disclaimer below. I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I'm purely sharing my own speculation and opinions on this market. I cannot tell you the future and you should always do your own due diligence before trading or investing in this market as it's extremely risky and volatile. If you have any questions or comments, please do only leave them in the comment section below, but I'll try my best to get to as many of them as possible. Now, see what exactly is going on in this market first. Most importantly, I do take a look into Bitcoin dominance. It tells me where the money could be trending into, would it be Bitcoin, altcoins, or neither. I've already done a more detailed post on these two markets and how they could potentially affect the overall altcoin markets in my earlier post today. So if you want to see that in more detail, do take a look at it. It is important. Right now, I do see Bitcoin dominance down about 0.5%. Bitcoin, this breaks down to Bitcoin price action down about 0.3%. Total altcoin market cap not affected by this Bitcoin pullback today, up over 1%. Now, Bitcoin dominance right now is still my focus on the three-day time frame here, okay? Because I did see a lower low made. However, it was still some bullish divergence. Now, if Bitcoin dominance continues downwards and gets rejected by this three-day 21MA and does not get over it, that's more ideal for the altcoins if it continues downwards, okay? I usually emphasize Bitcoin dominance to trend downwards. That's generally speaking better for the altcoins on both the upside and downside, okay? However, if Bitcoin dominance actually breaks this key resistance, 3-day 21 MA right here, the blue line, and somehow it goes back upwards, not as ideal for the altcoins as we have seen yesterday. Okay, when Bitcoin dominance was trending upwards, Bitcoin pulls back a lot more brutal losses for the altcoins. Let's go over to Bitcoin here and see what exactly could be going on. So as I have mentioned yesterday, key support right now is the daily 50 MA. Okay, it has been holding up the price action for uh, today and it looks like it's getting a slight bounce here. Key resistance would be the daily 50 MA, uh, excuse me, daily 21 MA, the blue line right here. Okay, that's the key resistance now. A couple of days ago, it was key support, but we have broken below it. Now it's key resistance. Some bearish signals still on the higher time frames, more notably on the weekly time frame where I am seeing bearish divergence playing out right now. Okay. Monthly time frame, we still have bearish divergence that have yet to play out and yield a red candle. Not something I will lose track of still, because if it actually does play out here on the monthly time frame, that's at least one month worth of pulling back. And when Bitcoin pulls back, it could still have an effect on the overall altcoin markets. Multiplier of that effect will usually depend on how far up or down Bitcoin dominance is trending. Let's go over to Maker. See what exactly has gone on in here. I'm going to take a look from the monthly time frame down to the daily, which I consider to be macro time frames. See if we have any overbought RSI readings or possible bearish divergence scenarios. On the monthly time frame here, we don't have a reading on the RSI, so let's move on. Weekly time frame here, we are at a reading of about 61. We have retreated from an RSI reading of over 92. Okay. Now, if the price action wants to make a higher high here, it does need to beat the last RSI reading of over 92 here, 93 almost even, to negate bearish divergence. 
Three day time frame here, we are at an RSI reading of about 51 here, so not in overbought territory. However, if the price action wants to make a higher high here, it does need to beat the last RSI reading of 82 here from this previous all time high to negate bearish divergence. Daily time frame here, we are at an RSI reading of just about 40, so not in overbought territory at all. Currently, um, very similar thing could be said here on the daily time frame as what I did on the three day and the weekly about possible bearish divergence. Let's take a look into a pattern I could be dealing with here, okay? I do see a potential falling watch pattern here that's yet to be completely validated or completed because I'm still looking for that second swing down to this bottom trend line here, okay? I need two sets of swings up and two sets of swings down to validate this pattern. I have two sets of swings up. However, only still one set of swing down. I'll count this as the second set if it comes down to my estimated bottom trend line. Now, if this falling watch pattern is validated and completed, according to Thomas Bukowski and his website, thepatternsite.com, it has a 68% chance of it breaking to the upside. If it breaks to the upside, the measure target, which is taken by measuring the opening of the pattern and then adding it back to the expected breakout point. Let's just say it's absolute apex of this falling watch pattern would be about 2850, 2850. Okay. That's the measure target. Now measure targets are theoretical approximate targets only may actually be different in real life price action, more or less. Let's take a look into some of the key resistances and supports relevant to this price action right now. Let me, sorry, let me correct that. That didn't seem like it was straight enough of a trend line there. Still slightly below 2850 there would be the measure target after I have fixed the trend line there. So slightly below 2000, 850 would still be the measure target. Let's take a look into some of the key resistances and supports relevant to this price action. I do have one at the FIB level area, about 2050 FIB level area, followed by 2400 FIB level area. Okay, those are the two main resistances above the pattern that are FIB level areas. Let me also take a look into some major moving averages that could be above the pattern as well. Right off the bat here, I can see the daily 50 MA that's above the pattern already. So even if it looks like the price action has broken above the pattern, still look out for short term moving averages and bigger moving averages as well. This is a big moving average daily 50 MA. It looks like the three day 21 MA could be above the pattern, even though not from the snapshot right now. However, it is upward sloping. So look out for that as well. Let's take a look into um, any short term moving averages. 12 hour 50 looks like it could be parallel with the top trend line here. Six hour 200 is also above. Four hour 200. 3 hour 200, the orange lines. Possibly not the 2 hour 200. It's still within the pattern, but downward sloping. So some short term moving averages and some longer term moving averages could be above the pattern by the time price action looks like it has broken above the pattern. Things to be looking at for. Key supports currently and immediately would be about the 1750 FIB level area, just to be even here. About the 1750, that's correct. Now the weekly 21 is approaching this uh, pattern as well. So let's see how far that actually catches up to the pattern. If the 1750 area does not hold, the next level of key support, it looks like from this snapshot here, it would be about the 1450 FIB level area, okay? Before the weekly 21 MA, or depending on how far uh, up that actually gets to the price action. Let's take a look into the bullish and bearish case scenarios here. Bullish case scenario, price action finishes developing this falling watch pattern, validates it, completes it, and breaks out of it. 
going towards this measure target. Also, minding a lot of those key resistance levels I have just pointed out as those could be points of rejection. Bearish case scenario, price action breaks above, uh, breaks below this bottom trend line. Okay, looks like the next level of key support I'll be looking at would be the fit level area about the 1450 fit level area. Seeing if that holds, if not, looks like it will be possibly, excuse me, 1450, that's correct. 1450 would be the next level of key support if the price action breaks this bottom trend line. And then the weekly 21 MA and the three day 50 MA and see if these key supports hold. Now these are my bullish and bearish case scenarios for today. Let me know if you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Let me know agreements, disagreements, feedback. I love to hear them. Hope you manage your risk carefully. And if you'd like to see any more of my most recently uploaded videos on YouTube, you guys can check out my links up here on YouTube. See you next time.